Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Thank you so much for coming in and checking this out. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm sending such a warm hug and loves to you wherever you are in the world. Please let me know down below in the comment section. Where are you from and how are you doing? My name is Wendy Morgan and I'm your spiritual mentor. I help people uh, progress through this ascension process, learning how to clear things out and making it easier to incorporate higher vibrational frequencies and also to give you a, so I channel your higher self and soul and that of spirit of what is coming into our planet and what we're experiencing, which is really, really, really exciting as far as what is here now. And that's what we're going to go in today. So today's date, I think it's March. I think it's March the 4th. And what I'm going to discuss with you actually came about in February. I want to say, I have no idea. My phone's in front of me, so I can't look at my, my, but so today's Thursday. So I think it was like the 22nd of February. It was Sunday night. So it was almost a week and a half ago, Sunday night that these things happened. So I'm going to kind of share with you a little bit about what, what my experience was and that what really came out, what really happened. And this is so exciting for everyone. So on um, Sunday night, when I was getting ready for bed, I just, for some reason, when the spirit always knocks on my energetic door at nighttime and I'm just like, why are you doing this at night? Do this a day. Cause I always live at night going, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God. And I was really, really excited and keeps me awake for hours. You know, whoever, who else does that? You know, I don't know if it's just me, me and my daughter. We, I mean, we seriously were thinking maybe we should get to bed like seven o'clock. So we bypass that window of spirit going, Hey, by the way, knock, knock, knock. This is exciting. Something's happening. And we're like, no, we want to go to sleep. So it's been really, really funny. So let me know if you have that too. Um, so, but anyways, again, right for bed and, um, we're feeling some really great excitement, exciting, you know, um, energies coming along and I'm like, something really feels different. It really feels lighter, like really, really, really lighter. And I was just like, all right, I got to go check in. I got to see what this is all about. So I went in time, I went in and I meditated. Now I'm not going to go in depth what happened here because it's <laughs> because the way in which it is, well, maybe I will go in depth here, but the way which was delivered to me, um, was, is let's say a story. And this story, um, is where, you know, a few thousand people will follow and understand. And yeah, that makes total sense. But it doesn't mean the story is for anybody and everybody. Um, it could be for some and it could be for none. Um, but what I was told, shown by spirit is this is where it looks like kind of sorta. And I mean that because we, you got to remember, we are trying to understand something that is way above our comprehension when it comes to the human body and the human mind. So spirit gives us images that which we can relate to and understand, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's exactly the way you see it. So with that being said, let's jump into it. So what I was shown was that we are on fourth dimensional earth. We are here. We are completely sealed off. We are safe. We're no longer being affected by dark energies. My experience, I would say, yes, that's absolutely true. We are completely separate from that, a third dimension, um, so right there, we're going to put a pen in and here's where it gets a little crazy. So again, this is just the best analogy that which spirit gave to me to kind of share with you guys. So here we have planet earth and planet earth of third dimension has many different, uh, vibrational, um, layers. Let's put it that way. And as people move up in vibration, they go into different layers and from what I understand, there's anywhere between 10 and 12 different layers upon earth. One layer has already left and already has ascended into fifth dimension. Another layer, which I'm currently tapped into, has also left earth. And we're now in fourth dimension, completely separate from the other bodies of earth. Okay. Coming back to here, other peoples are going to consistently move up into different higher vibrations. And as soon as their um, critical mass on that layer, it's also going to lift up. We are all still connected, but 
again, that's an analogy. It's not like exactly imprecise, right? It just kind of makes you understand, hmm, it's interesting. But nevertheless, if you're watching this, I, you are on this one that has just recently pulled away and is solely on fourth dimension. It's completely sealed. Um, that means it's not affected by third dimension or lower vibrations. Our earth that was the third dimensional earth that was associated with us, it actually has already dissolved. It's gone. And I'll get more into you're like, but I still see it out there. And that's not what you think you're seeing. That's all. I told you this is going to get a little crazy. Um, so, but anyways, so where we are, what is fourth dimension? Fourth dimension is a threshold. It is a place between places. It's a place th between third dimension and fifth dimension. It is a place where you learn like a child, you learn the new ropes of the new energy. And as you learn more, and as you raise your vibration, then you move up to fifth, real simple. So what's really going on here? And what are we here to learn? Hopefully, I'll go ahead and remember it all. So and this is the important part, you know, forget about the other earth part. This is actually the important part. So here in fourth dimension, we are learning about letting go of the ego. Um, our ego is what always asks questions. Well, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> ego. Well, when I saw that bird, was that a symbol of ego? Um, so I felt this really great energy come down and it was just like shaking all over my body. And does that mean it was moving all of the programming out of my body? You're asking a question, ego. So what does the ego do? So I'm not saying ego isn't bad, terrible. Guys, we all have an ego. We have it. There's no way you could be having a third. There's no way you could have had a third dimensional experience without an ego. We all have one. Some are way more intense than others. Some are a little more sub subtle. You still have a flipping ego. I have a, my ego is still in belief that it's still very strong and, and fired up. I just canceled a lot of stuff just a couple weeks ago about my evil, evil, <laughs> it's funny, ego and evil, right? About my ego being in control. My ego was very much in fear that it was not going to be in control. So it was kind of creating a resistance to spirit. And so that to me was like, hmm, I need to let it go. And I need to let, let my ego know it's okay. Because this soul that's going to come sitting down in the, in the driver's seat, that's still me. And you've got to befriend and love me. Sorry, I got things popping up on my phone. And so you got to really soothe and relax the ego. And there's different ways of doing that. If you want to work with me anytime, I'm just here to kind of tell you what's going on. Um, so one is really letting the ego calm down. So it's not only sits in the side seat, but sits in the back seat. And eventually it disappears. And in the process, in the meantime, your soul sits in the driver's seat. And so right now we're still looking at me, the individual person, and then my soul. And it's going to come to a point where you are one and the same and you're in that I am moment. When you're in that I am space and you realize I am in the driver's seat. I am the programmer. And that's where you're going to go as well. Another layer of what we're learning here is to be a witness and a, what's the other word? An observer of our thoughts. It's very, 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 very important that you get, that you work on, that you are the boss of your thoughts. If you can witness your thoughts, that is the first really great space before you weren't witnessing it, before they were just controlling you and throwing you all over the place. Get to a place where you can witness your thoughts. And what do you do? You just observe it. You're, you're being conscious in the moment to pay attention to what you're thinking and saying to yourself on a regular basis. It's just a new muscle, guys. It's just a new muscle. And you start there. You just start paying attention. You know, at first you're going to catch yourself after the fact, for instance, you say, oh my gosh, I was so stupid when I, right? And you, oh, wait a minute. I just said that, right? So you pay attention to your thoughts and you get a control on them. In the past, I always said, if you're starting this for the first time, whenever you witness yourself doing a negative thought, especially against yourself, but against anything else, wrap it up, cancel it out with three positives. 
So if I was really stupid that I did it, oh my God, I just said I was really stupid. No. Okay. So actually I'm really intelligent. I know I'm intelligent. I'm just really tired and I'm grateful that I can actually lay down and take a nap. So anything that's grateful or anything positive, um, I know I'm intelligent because I figure out things other people don't figure out. Um, that's terrible. That was a really bad, cause that was a comparison. That was a really bad one. You don't want to, we're not in comparison. I'm sorry. Um, so I am really intelligent. Um, I'm really lovable. Um, I know that I come out with some genius ideas. If you can't say anything nice about yourself, then just say nice about anything. Um, no, um, I love my body. You know, I like the way my hair looked today. Um, I'm really grateful that I don't have any pain in my body today. What are come across some positives to cancel out that negative. And eventually you're going to get to a point where you do say um, that, oh, I was so stupid. Before it, you even say it in your head and that energy and that emotion is coming up, you're going to have a look at it and go, oh, no, I'm not going to say that. I love myself. I'm better than that. I deserve more. I deserve me to say positive things to me. What is that doing that's empowering you? And this is another part. You need to stand in your power. Standing in your power is not standing in your aggression and ready to fight. No, standing in your power is connecting in with your higher self and soul and the God um, consciousness that will power through your cells. That is the real power, guys. We've been programmed to think, and this is the real power. It is not. The real power comes from our connection to the divine. Our connection with the creator, our connection with all that there is. Okay. So that's number two. So pay attention to your thoughts, get in control of your thoughts, because this is also a space of manifestation. So the more you get more clear and more open to spirit, and chances are, if you're here on this, this particular wave that, that, which I'm speaking from, that you're here, you already are connected and you're probably finding already that manifestation is happening faster and faster and faster and faster. But Guys, anything in your lifetime that you've ever seen or looked at that, that you say, for instance, you've, you know, tried manifestation. And I remember this one easy manifestation I tried about, oh my gosh, 20 years ago. And she said, you know, for the first think about yellow butterflies, yellow butterflies. And lo and behold, you start seeing yellow butterflies. Oh my God, yay, I manifested the yellow butterflies. Woohoo. And then the next day you go ahead and you get a flat tire. Like, oh, darn rotten luck, right? No, you manifested that one too. <laughs> Pat yourself on the back. You manifest the positives and the negatives. You manifest every single thing in your life. Yes, you do. And the more you look at that and take responsibility for it, you are pulling that power, bringing it right back to you, and you are empowering you again. So this is a win-win situation. But that's why you want to get on top of your thoughts because you don't want to manifest the not so nice things to experience. It's just contrast. Contrast is teaching you more about you. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just negative. It's just neutral. It's well how you look at it that makes it positive or negative, but it makes you learn and see something about yourself more so. Okay, so there's thoughts and also manifesting. Another aspect is our bodies, I hope I'm going to be able to communicate this properly. Our bodies actually are very good transmitter. It's meant to transmit energy, transmute energy. We are meant to transmute energy from a lower vibration up to a higher vibration because our bodies, our beings actually have the capability of vibrating when we are at 3D, right? Third dimensional vibrations all the way up to like 10th vibrational density. Granted, we don't remember being at 10th dimensional vibration by guarantee. We've all been there. But by the time you come down, your brain cannot take in that knowledge, can't take in that memory, can't take in that, that higher frequency because your brain is not at that frequency. It just doesn't work. It's, um, it won't keep in that memory because it doesn't have a way to translate and understand it. So, but just the same, we were meant to actually translate a transmute. Um, I know I was just talking to a friend of mine. He goes, I'm an electrician. And I'm like, I know I need you. Um, but uh, we are here to move the energy up from a lower vibration to higher vibration. And we do it pretty much on a regular basis. Um, it really goes a lot faster when you're conscious with it by just simply tapping into your body. And okay, I command that all energy that's of any lower vibration of a 5.0 
get transmutated and translated up into a high vibration above that of a five of above that of a 5.0 now I command this to be so that's it it's done really simple really easy and that moves everything up but let's say for instance and I'm going to use myself as an example um, I got really angry in December um, I got very frustrated I was very tired and um, I had a particular package that was my daughter's in in my my living room and it was a very large package it was a 175 pound large package and I wanted it out it's been there for about two weeks and I wanted it out of my living room and I one day just kind of woke up maybe on the wrong side of things I don't know I was angry I was pissy and so in that process um I just gotta check my time here come on okay we're good um so in that process um I said to my youngest daughter and I said you know what um, why don't we, we're just going to get this out of here. We're going to get this out here, right here, right now. And so we picked up the, um, we picked up the box and we brought it to the car and we brought it over to her house. But that's not what's important. What's important is I got angry. So what does that do? It decreases the heart, right? Also affects the solar plexus, which also affects the liver, which also affects because I didn't want to give. I'm retracting my masculine of giving energy away from my right arm, right? And I'm so my energy field basically pulled in on my right side where my right arm was more exposed. So as I was going through life a week later, I was trans, I, was, I picked up an energy that my body was meant to lift up into higher vibration. And it will get stuck in places of low density of low vibration that are in your body. I have low vibration in my arm because I don't have nice high vibration for my heart chakra and my solar plexus chakra. And I'm, you know, sending energy out. And I'm really happy about giving, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And my arm was still exposed. And so that energy came up and it kind of stayed here just for or didn't stay but it was here just for a little while long enough for me all of a sudden to go I feel pain right I feel pain oh my gosh I feel pain now if you left it right there and you said but this energy is not mine I'm simply transmitting it okay so I command to be up and I go through that little thing up into higher vibration let it go but I realize that that energy is also meant to indicate to me that I'm not doing my job as a sovereign being and protecting this body and expanding my heart and expanding my solar plexus and letting energy run down in my right arm again. That's what it's meant to do is give us indications. But of course I didn't <laughs> because I wasn't awake at that moment. And instead I went and said, oh my gosh, it hurts. Oh, I bet you I know what's from. It's when I picked up that box. Well, I'm a, my license is in metaphysical therapy. The injury doesn't show up a week later, guys. It shows up within 24 to 48 hours. But nevertheless, I went ahead and I found a reason why it hurt. As soon as you find that reason, you are creating an association with it. You're locking in that energy in that space. That's exactly what's happening. So now that energy got locked into my whole arm. And I experienced so much pain for approximately two months. It's pretty going away. It's I've been working with it, working with the programming, working to open up, expanding my heart, yada, yada. So it's nearly gone. But when you feel pain in your body, when you feel emotions, when you feel a mental thought, right away go, not mine. <sighs> Disassociate. Disassociate. Be neutral with it. Be surrender to it. And go, okay, it's it's giving me indication of something that I'm holding on to that I'm not aware of. Okay, I get that. I'll look at that in a minute. I'm going to lift that up into higher vibration. Now let's go back. And let's look at where I felt that pain. So if you have an emotional pain that's in your heart or grieving in your lungs, then you know, okay, I need to go and figure out what that grieving part was about. Where is it? Where am I holding a, a program? Where am I holding a vibration? Where am I holding something? In resistance, not willing to let it go. Because when I went ahead and lifted that box, I was pissed and I wasn't willing to let it go. And even though I kind of thought, just shoved it to the back and I'm done with it. No, it was still in the back. I didn't process it. I didn't go and go, okay, 
So I was angry. Anger is fine, but you need to move through it. You don't need to store it and have it cause problems with your body. Okay. So I hope that was clear. So that's another one to learn about how your play is with energy with this particular body. Okay. As we remove, as we remove programs, we'll be lifted higher and higher into higher different frequencies. So let's see if I got everything here. Uh, your program clearing, becoming intentional thinker. Yes, yeah, so you're going to be coming more of an intentional thinker from the lazy thinker. So the intentional thinker is, of course, someone who's conscious in their mind, observing their thoughts and churning them around to the way they want them. A lazy thinker is someone who's completely unconscious, not letting their thoughts kind of run their life and, you know, basically having the victim mode. Uh, we have to let go of ego. We're stepping into the true self of the I am presence. We are allowing versus asking. Oh, that's right. Forgot about the ego part. We're experiencing versus laying on new programs. Um, so let me get into that real quick. So our ego asks questions. So we talked about a while ago, right? Where you're observing your thoughts as a witness, right? So if you can hear yourself think and see, oh my gosh, I just thought about the horse. Oh my God, I just said that in my mind. I thought about the horse, right? If you can witness that, that's not you. That's just the mind and the ego running within the mind, right? Within the mental body. Um, so, but when you, so that whole concept also apply it to when you meditate, also apply it to the world, witness the world and be an observer, become neutral with it. Whenever you see something that's, I'm going to, I'm going off topic. Whenever you see something that sparks you emotionally and is a charge, an emotional charge, that is a program backing that emotional charge. And I gave this example to a friend of mine the other day, when here in the United States, right, when we burp, we are trained to cover our mouth and afterwards say, excuse me. But if you find others come from a different country, they might belch out loud and may not say, excuse me. We here in the United States, because we've been programmed, oh, that's rude in their country. That's a compliment. So it all depends on your programming. So this is a simple program. Everything, guys, everything is a program. I am human. I have an ego. I must eat. Still eat. You'll get, you'll listen to yourself. But still, this is still a program. All of these things. I have, there's gravity. There's a tree outside. I can feel, I can think, I can hear, I can speak. These are all programs. As much as they're like, that's part of, what are you talking about? That's part of our foundation. Yeah. Yeah. And it was meant and it was beautifully laid down and it was meant and it supported you while you were in third dimension. You cannot take your third dimensional self into the fifth dimension. You can't. You can't. You must let it go. So you can rise and become the true self that you were meant that you're meant to be within this process. Okay. And I'm going to go into that later because today I just learned a whole new thing about the fifth dimension and that, that new, I don't even want to call it the fifth dimension or new earth. It's just a new phase of beingness. It's wow. It was just beautiful. Blew my socks off today. Um, so some of you might say, well, what are you talking about? You know, I'm still experiencing, you know, darkness and, and evil attacks and um, negative things. And, you know, my uh, mother or father-in-law is still screaming at me. You know, how am I, you know, living in this fourth dimension and these things are still happening because it's still running in your mind as a program. You have so much momentum. And I'll give you an example. Excuse me. You have momentum. You have so much physical, mental, emotional, um, autonomic, automatic, subconscious, conscious programming that when you wake up in the morning, you're going to see your bedroom. So that has so much power behind it, so much momentum that's been going on for years that when you wake up in the morning, you're going to see your bedroom. And the same thing goes with all the other programming, including, oh my gosh, I'm being followed by darkness. I'm being attacked by demons. I'm constantly attracting the worst case scenario. It all comes down to you guys. 
I love you and I'm sorry if you're feeling these things, but it all comes down to you. Where you place your focus is where the power follows. Where you place your focus is where your power follows. Wherever your power is at is what you are going to manifest, is what the universe is going to bring into fruition. If you say enough over and over again to the point you absolutely believed it, that um, yellow butterflies land on me all the time. Every time you go outside, a yellow butterfly is going to come around and land on you. Not kidding. I've put this to test so many times. It totally works. You, everything, while we're here in this fourth dimensional world, you can think about, I don't like this, this, this analogy, but it's the best analogy because we all can go and relate to it, is that we are in the middle of a computer construct. The programmer that writes the software for everything, you. You are the programmer that writes the software for this fourth dimension. Yes, there's me too. And there's him, and then there's her, and then there's him. We all are connected. And yes, we all are programmers of the unified field of this prog program. But for your personal program of how you relate to things, of how you interpret things, of how you react or respond to things, that's you, the programmer, writing that software. And that software is your programs, right? So this is a time where we are going to be looking at it closer and the more you sit down and actually find out where your programs are, remove your programs, meditate, align yourself, tell your, your uh, ego to sit back and allow yourself to observe the world and just let it be. You're also going to take that in and observe your meditations. So when you're a meditative thought and you like see shapes or symbols or colors or people, or certain beings, or whatever, and you say in your mind, what does that mean? What does that mean? Or you're asking, so God, what does that mean? That is your ego, guys. That is your ego. As you move through your meditations, really work on being the observer and the witness, and just experience it. That's all you're doing is you're experiencing it. So as you see these shapes come to you, Either you have a knowingness of what it is, or you won't. If you don't, cool shape, man. That is really rad. I love the feeling that comes with that. <gasps> feel that energy just constantly move to your body. Wow, that was really cool. <gasps> I feel divine energy floating down through my body. <gasps> I see Master Sananda, or um, Jesus as others know it, placing his hand on my head. I feel the energy of white golden light just shining out from his hand. It doesn't have to mean anything to your human brain construct ego self. Just accept it for the beauty and the glory that it is. If someone came out of the blue and just walked up to you, if I walked up to you and I said, and I gave you a big hug and I just held you and our hearts connected the point where you're able to take a deep sigh you felt relaxed and safe and grounded that felt that feels so good and then when I let my arms down would you go so why did you do that what does that mean no right you would just how is it that's all you would do and the same thing is being asked of spirit as you move through your meditations. Stop asking questions. That's the ego. Just allow yourself to experience. The more you allow yourself to experience, the further you will fly in your meditations. The more visions will become more vivid and clear. You know, like, I know all of us have experienced this. When we're just kind of like, you know, zoning out and just really kind of tired or just zoning out, whatever. And all of a sudden we'll feel a feeling or see something that's really cool. Kind of like 
in our other vision, you know, kind of like, you know, because you're zoning out, you're not really seeing it, but you're seeing it, right? You're not really looking at it clearly, but you still see it. And it's like, you know, you're kind of, you know, it's foggy and you kind of just see it. And then slowly your mind comes in and go, oh, that looks really cool. And you go, oh, that does look really cool. And you look at it and it's gone. As soon as you look at it with that type of focus, it's that ego that's coming in. As soon as the ego comes in, it drops that energy back down. So really work on just experiencing the energies and how they feel to you. Um, and, and if that means you might feel energy come into you, and, oh my God, you just feel so elated and there's so much energy moving through you and there's tinglies in your head and you're like, wow. And then the next second they're gone. That's okay. We don't have to hang on to anything. It's the ego that wants to hang on to things. We don't have to hang on to them. We're moving to that good feeling tingly space. Regardless, you're going there. But don't hang on to because that just brings it right back down to lower vibration. Okay? So I think I've said everything here um, about where we're moving, where we are at. That's not even where we're moving into. And that's going to be another video of what we're moving into. So where we are at, we're all into fourth dimension right now. We're all locked in. We're completely safe. This is a threshold again for us to kind of like get the feeling of the new dance steps and to learn how to flow and learn how to let go and to learn how to have fun and just let the energy run through us and to let go of the ego and to really beckon and welcome in the soul. And eventually we're on the I am presence and we're moving into the fifth dimension. It's really a lovely state of place of being. So thank you so much for you guys very much for joining me today. I hope this was clear. I, I, I was going to leave this about um, when this happened, um, you know, the, the next Monday and I seriously had so much energy shooting through me. I tried to make a video, but I was literally talking like I knew an hour and I was really excited and I just, I couldn't do it. And you couldn't even understand it. I was all over the board. So I knew I had to wait until I calmed down a bit and let the information kind of um, infiltrate and come in and come through and actually ground down in me. So I hope that was clear. If you have any questions, feel free to go and, you know, reach out to me. Um, if anything of this basically created a defense within you, or felt disrespected by my words. I have no intention to disrespect you by any measure, and nor did I ever um, intend to go ahead and make you feel defensive. But that is for um, um, then this this video is just not for you. And I'm and um, defensiveness is usually because you're not embracing your own power. Um, so I apologize if that did. But just the same, um, you need to kind of own it yourself. Um, by owning it, you embrace it. And by only embracing it, you empower yourself, which is a good start to go. So anyways, I love you guys. I hope you have a great evening, a great day, or a great morning. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.